Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, my beloved brethren and sistren, to the Tawahedo Bible Study Podcast. As always, you may subscribe, share, and support. You may subscribe wherever you're hearing this, be it YouTube, Anchor, Transistor, Spotify, Apple, Google, Wazata. And you may make sure to rate it. Obviously, I hope you rate it as much as possible, but whatever you can, and especially leaving a commentary that would allow other people to find this message as well, and hopefully get some life granted to them from the word of God. You can share the link to where you found this with other people, ideally your strangers and enemies your neighbors as well. And you can share the very words of God that you hear read aloud and recited. You can support at a new location now, uh, very similar to before, but just trying to make things adjusted about a a year into the resurrection of this podcast. Go to patreon.com slash aksum, a little shorter to remember than tawahado. So p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash a-k-s-u-m. Without further ado, let us enter Romans chapter 6. And as always, to avoid the sensorial legal folks, we will go to the KJV, Romans 6, verses 1 through 7. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. May we all die on that happy note. We are granted this binary, this dichotomy, these two choices, these two options. After acknowledging that we are justified, that we are declared righteous by Yahweh, by the Lord, We have the options before us of wallowing in sin, which the Hebrew Bible defines as rebellion against Yahweh, or being baptized in his death, which is newness of life, or to live a new life. I won't dare speak on behalf of you all who are my hearers, but I, for one, favor the latter to the former verses 8 to 11 to continue the movement through Romans 6. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Consider yourselves, I like this phrase, it's a thought experiment, as we philosophers like to say, and you're given this dichotomy again. Are you going to be alive to sin and dead to God in Christ, or will you be dead to sin and alive to God in Christ. Either alive to sin and dead to God, 
or dead to sin, excuse me, either alive to sin, yeah, alive to sin and dead to God, or dead, alive to sin and dead to God, or dead to sin and alive to God in Christ or through Christ or via Christ. It's a tough choice. <laughs> it really is a tough choice. Which route do you want your GPS to take you to? For that matter, which GPS machine are you going to choose? Are you going to use Waze? Are you going to use Google? Are you going to use Apple? Are you going to use Sin? Or are you going to use God through Christ? Are you going to use Sin? Or as we get to it, are you going to use Grace? Hopefully the latter. Verses 12 through 14. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. You're under grace. You're subject to grace. Therefore, let grace reign. Let grace govern. Let grace be your monarch. Let grace be your absolutist monarch, your king. Obey grace. Ask yourself these two questions. What would sin have me do? What would grace have me do? It's kind of like the great American adage, which I have uh, mentioned many a time here. The American Christians get something right. What would Jesus do? What would grace do? Verses 15 to 20. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. This is a great reminder that there is no such thing as freedom qua freedom. There is no philosophical freedom. There is no ontological freedom. There is no freedom just floating around in the mind of Plato. In real life, you have a choice. And that choice is in a sense a false choice. Because your choice is not between freedom and slavery or freedom and servitude, bond to servitude. It is what will you be bond to? servant to or whom will you be bond servant to choose your master and choose your master wisely with wisdom with hukmana with sophia verses 21 to the end what fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed for the end of those things is death. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. As a constant reminder that we do not self-declare ourselves righteous. We do not self-aggrandize or try to make ourselves big and great. It's through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
in the scroll of Galatians, one of my favorite scrolls, the fruits of the spirit are contrasted with the work of the flesh. It's a very analogous passage in Galatians 5. Compare Romans 6 with Galatians 5, the ending of both. But here, the fruit of sin is contrasted with the fruit of grace. So both the bad and the good are fruit. There it's fruit and work. So the fruit of grace is righteousness, which leads to holiness and everlasting life. But I want you to know and get it through your thick skull that this is not a casino game where you're trying to win some daily jackpot. Instead, it's a sequence of events, a sequence of states that spring forth from obedience to the law of Christ. expressed through visible actions toward your neighbor, toward the stranger, towards he whom you think is your enemy. Glory to God for all things.